Good morning, my neighbours! Ladies and gents, it's Friday, which means two things, right? Number one, podcast time tonight, half past seven, with yours truly, as we once again try to make sense of the senseless with the live chat, live stream, all of that stuff, get involved. But number two, if it's Friday, it means that we've made it through another week. We've survived once again, guys. And I suppose three, although this is not exclusive to Friday, it's time for an alternative paper review. First up to the Daily Star today, you've been tangoed. This is the story that Donald Trump has been found guilty on all counts, over 30 counts in that New York courtroom in relation to the hush money, the using campaign finance money to pay off the porn star. A story that echoes throughout Fleet Street this morning. The Telegraph with Trump guilty. The Times say Trump found guilty in hush money trial. The Mirror say Trump guilty. Ex-president faces jail after jury convicts him on all 34 counts over porn star hush money. Now, before we get into the symbolism, the culture war, the MAGA-ness, of this story, let's first try to engage with the substance, knowing full well that's gonna send some of you breaking out in hives. Because the Magalot are very much like the 2019 intake of Culture War Tories. People like Jonathan Gullis, Lee Anderson, Scott Benton, and legacy opportunistic chances, like Boris Johnson himself, or Suella Braverman. People who cannot engage in the substance of an argument within a debate, and so they trip switch, they flip to symbolism, to flags, to poppies, etc., etc. So, what is the actual substance of this Trump case? How have they arrived at this verdict? So right now we're in the 2024 US election cycle, but prior to this there was the 2020 one, the one that he claimed that he had won. Then there was a whole insurrection. Five people died around the Capitol building. That ugly debacle. Prior to that was the original one, right? Trump versus Clinton. And at that point, Donald Trump was still worried about how the general electorate might perceive him. And he was so worried that he asked his henchmen to broker a deal with a porn star with whom he had had sex while his wife was nursing their newborn son, Baron. Like, hey, hey, hey uh, Miss Daniels, uh, I, I understand that you may have done the uh, no pants dance with that orange warthog over there. We, we would just like some assurance that you're not going to go <laughs> blabbing about it. A request to which the only sane response would be, ah, uh, I'm not telling anybody that that happened. Like ever. But clearly this could be a big money payday for a struggling ex-porn star, so she signed an NDA in exchange for about $150,000. Now, here's where it gets icky. Because the MAGA lot, the Christian right, the Republican Party, the Trumpsters, Fox News, <laughs> Breitbart, all of them are going to say, it ain't illegal to have sex with a porn star. It ain't illegal. It may be ungodly. It may be unchristian, but it ain't illegal to have sex with a porn star behind your wife's back. <laughs> Get off your moral high horse. Live tight. And I suppose they're somewhat buoyed by the legal reality that in American courtrooms, it's not even illegal to pay hush money to somebody. <laughs> it's not illegal here either. Like imagine your dad takes down an ease, just like, yeah, all right, Jordan. All right. Um, listen, how about I pay you 500 pounds, right? 500 nicker, and then you never tell your mother, all right, <laughs> that you caught me whacking one out to your cousin's holiday photos. How about that? Yeah, five, six, 600. <laughs> oh, I raised you right, didn't I? That's true, that's true. All right, here you go. Run along, you little scab. So it's not illegal to bang a porn star. It's not illegal to pay her to shut the fuck up. I mean, I've said this a few times now. I'm seriously considering setting up a whole other Patreon tier where you drop 10 grand in there, and then I'll just shut up for three months. But no, where it becomes illegal is when you falsify business records to try to cover it up. Also, you can't use campaign finance money <laughs> to pay. <laughs> it's like, that's, that's what the jury have decided that he's done, right? Is he's taken $150,000 out of this war chest over here that's supposed to be used for glitter and fireworks and leaflets and adverts. He's used that money and then he's falsified the business records to cover it up all of that is seen as fraud and the jury have decided that because it was done with a purpose or with a view to winning the 2016 election, all of these things together 
make it a felony. So that is the substance of this story. He did something that morally he wasn't supposed to do. Then he used money that he wasn't supposed to access for this purpose to pay that woman to stay quiet. And then he falsified business documents to try to muddy the waters. But can you take a wild guess how the Magalot responding to this have they absorbed have they really considered any of that substance this was a sham trial they, they can't even say what what crime he committed and everyone's like are you are you mental <laughs> read the verdict there's a, a load of libtard liberals in new york they can't even say what the crime was they can't or you can't it, it's just a load of biased sham witch trial they, they can't say what the crime was oh my god just Read the verdict! Oh, no, no, no. G -g -g God damn it, I, I told you I can't read! Will Trump go to prison? Almost certainly not, because they can't jail him until after the appeal, and the appeal is going to take too long. By that point, he could be in the White House. And, sorry to be the bearer of bad news with this, but there's a lot of people saying if he had won this trial, like if he'd been acquitted, that would have emboldened him. But losing this trial will also embolden him people will see it as a sham witch hunt trial and they'll support him. They'll see him as having been politically and legally persecuted. And that the actual likely end game of this will be that he'll be given like a little bit of probation, but he'll be seen as a non-violent offender with a previously like unblemished record. And so yeah, now there's basically, there's people saying it is hugely unlikely that he will ever spend a day behind bars for this. Even though the crimes that he's committed are actually pretty fucking serious which if you follow this case and if you know like a little bit about case law and the legal system or whatever presumably this could create a precedent right if you're an american now and you're running for governor or congress or as the president in the future and it turns out that you've used campaign finance money for illicit means whatever and you find yourself in a courtroom presumably you can look back at this and you could be like yeah uh okay i i did it but uh you didn't jail Trump for this shit, right? So, so I guess I'll be on my way. From your neck to your end calls, your black ball. Screaming booze down the damn halls and crank calls. Reviews and those rants falls. My man brawls, your straw man, your ball games. It's your dad's balls. All day, every day, your boy's killing it. Quick dealing the sick shit, straight killing it. Slick figure in politics, full of thrill of it. Pillin' beer, swilling, going ape on gorilla shit.